Debate continues over the Archbishop Carlo Vigano's letter, which called for Pope Francis' resignation over the alleged cover-up in the Theodore McCarrick abuse scandal. The letter, released last Saturday, claims Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI sanctioned former Cardinal McCarrick nearly 10 years ago, but that Pope Francis supposedly rehabilitated him. This has become one of the key details in the letter yet to be proven. It comes as our Edward Penton spoke to Vigano this week about the fallout. Edward Penton is Rome correspondent for EWTN's National Catholic Register. He broke the story and has been covering it all week long. Edward, two videos are seeming to question a couple items in Vigano's account. As we mentioned, you talked to Vigano again this week. What is he telling you? Yes, well, the first video, Wyatt, was about um, him meeting the, the Holy Father in 2013. It was his first meeting with him. He says in his testimony that uh, the Pope uh, kind of rem remonstrated with him and said uh, he didn't want ideological bishops in the United States. He wanted moderate ones, and he said he was very stern and, and really quite, quite strong. Uh, in the video, it, it doesn't get that far. It cuts off just before he starts talking, but they seem very polite. So I think people think, well, is he being true? But I spoke to Archbishop Vigano yesterday, and he said, well, that the real meat of that happened when it was cut off. That was when he became very stern. Uh, the second video was about uh, him giving a speech uh, in Washington soon after he arrived in, in Washington, and he uh, was very complimentary about Cardinal McCarrick, but he said to me yesterday that he had to be because uh, he'd only just arrived and uh, it would be impolite not to be, in a sense, and he couldn't really say such a thing in public at that time. So uh, that was the reasons he gave, but he said it had no bearing anyway on the, on the, uh, the meaning of the whole uh, issue regarding McCarrick and his abuses. You have been digging into the sanctions supposedly imposed by Pope Benedict. What have you learned? Well, there's still quite a few questions left unanswered. Why it, uh, it does seem it seems fairly clear that there were some sort of sanctions, um, but it's unclear exactly what they were. Benedict can't remember, uh, but it does seem to be the case from what I've uh, been digging around and, and hearing is that they there were some sort of measures, um, but they were ignored by uh, Cardinal McCarrick uh, because of his positions of influence, and he was allowed to still continue to travel around the world and, and celebrate public masses. Uh, despite these sanctions and the question remains why weren't they followed through why weren't they um, why weren't they actually enforced and uh, one, one of the attitudes that I heard was to, to, because he was not making much of it of, his, of uh, attention in public that uh, they could sort of let let things sleep as the way it was the word that uh, was used let uh, it, the, the Cardinal McCarrick was essentially sleeping so just let him sleep and uh, that I think was the attitude that they took You've been covering the story from the beginning. It seems to be knocked off some front pages of major papers in the U.S. today, but reporters are still working on it. Firsthand, is the same true in Europe? And what are you hearing and experiencing as a reporter in the Vatican? Yes, I mean, it's still very much a big story here. I mean, it's not as big as obviously it was early in the week. Um, and I think it's perhaps bigger in the United States because of the, the McCarrick element to it. Uh, but uh, we were hoping that, uh, given that the Holy Father said on Sunday that uh, journalists need to look into this, that we would get some assistance from the Holy See in doing this. Uh, but so far that's not been forthcoming, and the cardinals that I've tried to speak to don't want to comment, and the Holy See press office doesn't want to assist either. So we're hoping that will change perhaps in the coming days and weeks. I know you'll continue to work on it. Edward Pinton, Rome correspondent for EWTN's National Catholic Register. Thanks so much. Thank you, Wyatt.